Hi, this is Sylvia and welcome back. I have great news because I've just released a new tiny little tool for ground motions, but I know it's real handy. So if you go to my website, sylviasbrainery.com, and you go to the shop, I might move to the shop to the right because nobody looks for the shop that early. And you go to Excel tools, and here's a tool. It's called Upload NGA Tools to Excel. Can't even be more descriptive than that. Right now it's a really good deal. Uh, it's almost a million bucks, but definitely worth it because it's going to save you a lot of time. So you go here and you buy it. I don't have to buy it because I built it, so I'm going to skip this tiny little stack because otherwise I have to pay taxes and fees on something that I already have. So pretend that I've downloaded, um, and then you're going to get a zip file of pretty much it's just an Excel file that zipped up. So you're going to put it in the folder where you want to keep it, and you unzip it, and you end up with a file that looks like this pretend I don't have these records but what you're gonna do pretty much is actually you can take this file with you and put it near where you have the records that you want to download um, actually you've already downloaded them um, what you want to do is you want to take these records that right now have the very efficiently stored data this is done this way for NGA because it's a uniform time step so it'd be redundant to save the data in uh, rows and columns of time and uh, acceleration so that's why they're stored like this you've got the header at the top the time step and so what the program does it's going to convert this into a time and acceleration or displacement or velocity uh, history this only reads this format of the NGA database this is from NGA West 2 on where pretty much this is the most important thing because this is where it reads what the time step is so you've got to have your records to be consistent with this format so I have them here. I'm going to load them up and plot them. So what you want to do is you take the file and you open it up. As you can see, it said .xlsm file, which means it has a macro, which is the code that does the work. So now, of course, I'm going to be updating Office because that's just my luck. I'm going to pause and catch up again when it's done. Of course, it was just my luck that I had to restart the computer three times. So here we go. We open up the file. I tested it. It does open this time. I just want to show you real time how these things go. Okay, so it takes a little bit to load up. What you come up to is a page. It's just a single worksheet where you have your output and there really isn't any input here because you're actually going to select the files. Um, reading and processing text files takes a long time no matter who you are and then writing them to individual cells not as a dynamic link but as a live link it also takes time so what I've done is I've set up a limit of 50 files and even 50 files can take about maybe seven to ten minutes to upload and process so take your time when you do this process let's get it started and then go from there so what you do is it's very simple you press this button that says upload NGA record files just to remind you to stay less than 50 and it's going to say are you sure you want to clear the contents because what this is going to do is it's going to clear everything all these graphs all the data it's only going to leave this button here because I wrote a little special code that doesn't erase it and it clears up this sheet so if you have something important move to a different sheet what this program does is whatever sheet that you're at, that's the sheet that it's going to work with. So you don't have to specify any other input. So I'm going to say yes. And it's going to send me to just select the files that I would like to grab. So what I'm going to do is I have them here. And I have a folder. And uh, let's say I'm going to grab all of these just to give you an idea of what this is. These are due, quattro, sei, otto, but it's about 10 files. So not too many, but typically you'd, I guess you'd be loading about 22 files if you're doing a ground motion analysis. So this you select the individual files and it's going to plot and deal with the individual files. As you can see, you don't see anything happening because I've turned things off. I've turned it off the updating and any calculations just to make things go faster, which means that you still see the old data. But as you can see, the button is pressed, my little circle is twirling. So you're going to sit back, relax, and wait. I'm actually going to keep playing this maybe I'll put some music overlay to give you an idea how much time this actually takes this is just on my little what is this a little surface tablet so and it's 234 right now let's see how long it takes 
um, just to give an idea that this works. But in the meantime, I can actually describe what the output is going to look like. What this is going to do is going to take each ground motion and paste two cards. It's going to clear and then start from the top left and go to the right. What it's going to do, it's going to paste in the very top left, in the very first block of these four cells, it's going to put in the full path of the file name, just so that you have it for reference. In case you have duplicates of a file name. Oh, wow, that was fast. Okay, there it is. 10 files have been uploaded and graphed to output worksheet. Okay, so going back to here, what this gives you, the very first one gives you, as you can see, is the full path. And so if I skip over to the next pair, it gives me the next full path. And you can see it's the file name that changes. Then, so this is the path. This here are the first four rows of the header. I've pasted them here for you if you want to see them. I think they're worth having because it gives information about the record itself. If you want, you can just delete that row if it's not important to you. In the next row, I have the header for the data is. So the first column is time. So I have given time and then just a file name. I've left the extension there because it could be VT2, it could be DT2. So I've left that extension. But as you can see, I've removed the whole path. And then here is whatever value this is. So this is an AT2 file. Therefore, this is going to be the acceleration. And so it's just every record pair across. So these should be a total of 20 columns. And as you can look down here, yes, those are 20 columns. What does the data look like? Well, this is exactly what I've done is start time t equals zero for the very first cell. Uh, sometimes that may not be zero, but I'm taking it as zero. And then the data goes all the way down to uh, down here. So you can see on the left hand side and down, each record has a different length, okay? Just so you know, because of course they're all different durations. They should all match in the pairs though. Then what you see here is I'm going to zoom out and for each record pair, I have plotted for you the time versus, so here it is, the time versus this value here. If the extension is AT2, it's labor acceleration. Otherwise it says velocity and displacement. You're gonna to have to check the units of that. There is no guarantee I'm making this assumption. You may need to make a correction to all of your um, graphs here, but I'll leave that to you to do. So what I've done is literally, I put the title is the name and then also the legend. So as you can see in the red, so if you want, you could take two of these records and overlay them on each other. The color is the same for all of them. So when you put them one on top of the other, you may have to change the color of one of them, but the labeling and the legends and everything should be nice and clean. I formatted these to what I use for my reports. So I think it's a nice format. You just scroll down and you go through each one of these records. What you can now do is you can duplicate this or you can move on to maybe a different folder. If you want, you can almost grab, I did it with like a right mouse. You can copy this guy and uh, go to another sheet, paste it. And uh, run that command here. And now you've got a new set of data here, or you can copy this data over to a different worksheet if you want. So if you want to collect other sets, you can start over or you can actually just call the macro. And then what I've done is I removed, stripped my own ribbon from what I typically have. And you can see, I don't really have a place where I can call macros. Well, what you do is you go here to the little arrow, you go to more commands. And this is something you only do once in your Excel setup. I would do customize ribbon. I think everyone should do this. I don't know why it's turned off, but you click on developer. And as you can see, it turns on all these different options as well. So my developer tab is now open and there it is. And so if you want, you can now, if you're used to doing it this way, you don't even have to carry this button around with you. You can say macros is the only macro that's in here. So I can say run. Are you sure you want to clear? You see now I'm in sheet one. I'm in no longer in the old one. So I'm going to say yes and only load up this file. This is, this data is hardwired in here. It's not a variable of anything else. So you can always copy it and paste it elsewhere. You can, you know, if you have a different worksheet, because because the code is locked here, you can't really add any more VBA code, but all you have to do is start a new Excel file. So let's say this other Excel file is what you're working with. 
Well, then you go to your main, the data one, and you take this guy here, and I'm gonna say move or copy, and I'm gonna move it to the other book. You see, I pulled down to where do I want it? So to book one, which is the one that I have. Do I wanna just move that table, that data, or do I wanna create a copy? Well, I'm just gonna create a copy of it. What this does, it ports everything over, as well as, well, not everything, just this worksheet over to your other files, and I've made a copy of it. Now be careful because the button here in my worksheet, oh, there it is, it's still copying things over. But there's my output file. This is gonna call the macro in the other program, so if you right mouse it, you can just cut it. Now you could do whatever you want because here you can actually edit your VBA code. See, the other one is locked, and uh, but this one you can actually, and so it's really just data that is there, so that's why I made it like this, so it's a self-standing. I didn't wanna do any add-ins and make anything complicated for everybody's use, so I think this is the cleanest way to do it. You can move these uh, graphs, you can do whatever you want. Uh, if you don't like the color blue, what you can do, I could spend all day playing with this, <laughs> but let's say I wanna change the line color and I want all my data to be red. Well, so you make that red, there it is. And so now what you do is you copy here, all right? And now what you wanna do, and you do all the formatting you want, then you go to the next chart and you say, and I have it like made smaller here, home paste special and I space the same formats as I have in that chart. Because everything is the same except for the data, it has actually copied the same formatting as well. And so then you can go to the next one and just can type F4. No, well, my computer F4 is not quite F4. So you type F4 and that redoes the last command that you just did. So you don't even have to do paste special every time. You could do F4 and go on. So this is my little spiel on Excel as well as looking at the data. As you can see, that chart over there is plotting these other data. Well, I hope you enjoy this program and you support what I'm doing. I'm happy to create more tools like this one. Thank you. Bye-bye.